മീൻ ലൈവ് നമുക്ക് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്യാം ഒരു മിനിറ്റില് നമസ്കാരം വളരെ സന്തോഷം ലാസ്യ മുഖരിക്ക സീരീസിലേക്ക് എല്ലാവരെയും സ്മിത മാമിനെയും സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇന്ന് നമ്മളോടൊപ്പം കഴിഞ്ഞ കുറെ എപ്പിസോഡ്സിലെ പോലെ തന്നെ വീണ്ടും ഒരു മോഹിനിയാട്ട കലാകാരിയാണ് ചേരുന്നത് അവരുടെ അനുഭവങ്ങളും അറിവുകളും ചിന്തകളും എല്ലാം ഇത്രയും കൊല്ലത്തെ ഒരു മോഹിനിയാട്ട കലാജീവിതമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടിട്ടുള്ള ഈ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസസ് എല്ലാം ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനായി ഇന്ന് എത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നത് വളരെ പ്രശസ്തയായ മോഹിനിയാട്ടം നർത്തകി ഒരു വലിയ കലാപാരമ്പര്യം കൊണ്ട നടക്കുന്ന റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ഷോൾഡറിൽ കൊണ്ട നടക്കുന്ന സക്സസ്ഫുൾ ആയി മുൻപോട്ട് പോകുന്ന ഒരു മോഹിനിയാട്ടം നർത്തകി ഡോക്ടർ ശ്രീമതി സ്മിത രാജൻ തന്നെ മാമിന്റെ അമ്മയും ചെറിയമ്മയും ഒക്കെ ചേർന്നതാണ് അപ്പൊ നിങ്ങളുടെ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ജനറേഷൻ ഇതേ ഫാമിലിയിൽ നിന്നും ഒരാള് അവരുടെ അനുഭവങ്ങൾ പങ്കുവെക്കാൻ വരുന്നതിൽ ഒരുപാട് സന്തോഷം മാമിന്റെ ഒരു കലാജീവിതം പറഞ്ഞ ഐ മീൻ അധികം പറയേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല നിങ്ങൾ ഒരു വളരെ വലിയൊരു ലീനിയേജ് ഫോളോ ചെയ്തൊരു very blessed to be in such a family എന്ന് പറയാം കലാമണ്ഡലം നായർ ആശാന്റെയും കല്യാണിക്കുട്ടിയമ്മ ടീച്ചറുടെയും പേരക്കുട്ടി ആവുക അവരുടെ മക്കളിൽ നിന്നും അവരുടെ അവരിൽ നിന്നും വളരെ ചെറുപ്പം തൊട്ട് തന്നെ ഒരു ഗുരുകുല സമ്പ്രദായത്തിലുള്ള കലാ പഠനം ലഭിക്കുക ഇതെല്ലാം എല്ലാ നർത്തകിമാർക്കും കിട്ടുന്ന ഒരു ഭാഗ്യമല്ല ആൻഡ് ഐ എം ഷോർ ദാറ്റ് ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് ഇൻ യുവർ ആർട്ട് ഇസ് വെൽ അപ്പൊ ആദ്യം തന്നെ മാമിനോട് ചോദിക്കാനുള്ളത് ഈ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസിനെ കുറിച്ചാണ് ഈ ഒരു കുടുംബത്തിൽ ഒരു ഗുരുകുല സമ്പ്രദായത്തിൽ കലയായി പരിചയപ്പെട്ട് കുട്ടി തൊട്ട് വളർന്ന് വന്ന ആ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് അതുപോലെ കല്യാൺകുട്ടിയമ്മ ടീച്ചറെ ഗുരുവായിട്ട് ലഭിക്കുവാൻ കിട്ടിയ ആ ഒരു ഭാഗ്യവും നിങ്ങളുടെ കളരിയിലെ ഓർമ്മകളും എല്ലാം പങ്കുവെക്കും മൈ മുത്തച്ഛൻ അമ്മമ്മ ലെഗസി ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡിഫൈൻസ് മീ <laughs> and uh, their life was uh, living under them was larger than life for me yeah. the knowledge base and uh, the aura they created you know the the aura they had it was like an institutional ecosystem around them so for me breathing and living in that ecosystem uh, naturally uh, created an ancient system of learning as you said ഗുരുകുല ശിഷ്യമ്മ സമ്പ്രദായം ആ ഗുരുകുല ശിഷ്യ സമ്പ്രദായത്തിലുള്ള വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം അമ്മ ചെറിയമ്മ അമ്മമ്മ മുത്തച്ഛൻ യുനോ എറൗണ്ട് ദം മൈ ലേണിംഗ് വാസ് വെരി നാച്ചുറൽ വളരെ ഒട്ടും ഫോമൽ ആയിരുന്നില്ല എല്ലാം വെരി നാച്ചുറൽ ആയിട്ടുള്ളൊരു ലേണിംഗ് ആയിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ അത് പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ യുനോ ഡാൻസസ് ഡാൻസസ് ക്ലാസിക്കൽ ഡാൻസ് ഫോം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്താ പ്ലസ് പെർഫോമിംഗ് ഡാൻസ് ഫോം ആണ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ പെർഫോമിംഗ് ഡാൻസ് ഫോം ആൻഡ് യു പ്രാക്ടീസ് യു പ്രാക്ടീസ് ആൻഡ് യു പെർഫോം and for me the theory and the practical everything was intermingled uh, that, during that learning it's not that i'm sitting in one place and learning the theory the gurus imbibe the ideas and uh, they put together a structure and an order and for me it was just going with that i didn't know that i was learning um, an art form like mohiniyattam because for mohiniyattam for me was you know i learned it as my my language my mother tongue so um it was just a flow it was very informal way of learning um, this that particular dance form young age uh, if i remember uh, i didn't even know that before even before i turned uh, became a te- teenager i went for professional stages and that stages was you know it was a class of its own and i never knew the high end professional stages i was uh, stepping into it was so natural that's what i said so natural that you know i even started teaching at a very young age so i remember um, uh, teachers uh, my mom, mom's generation teachers coming and uh, learning from my mama so i'm so thankful to those teachers like i should say the name uh, saraswati teacher and so many others from kerala kalamandalam when they came to learn from a mama i'm so grateful to those teachers for letting me allowing me to 
uh, help our mama when she used me as an instrument to teach teach Mohini atom. So for me, learning, uh, dancing, performing, teaching, it was just part of my life. Very young age, I started teaching. Even, even to teach, you have to learn. And the confidence you build in as a small child while teaching. So, you know, it went just, just went like that. So, um, after I, after I completed my school education, there uh, came a question whether I should take uh, Mohini Atom as a degree. Okay, so going to college. By that time, um, Mohini Atom, as you know, the universities has started giving conferring degrees for Mohini Atom, the language which I learned. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, I thought about it. Many times when I look at the colleges, the teachers who are teaching there would be my student or a student from our Kerala Galalayam. So for me, that was a serious step down to go and learn Mohini Atom in an institution just to get the degree. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> so, uh, and again, uh, you know, by that time I was very busy, um, even in my, um, as I said, young age to teenage, I started traveling with a mama, a ma, and all for numerous performances, very serious performances throughout Kerala. I remember the temple uh, festivals uh, in Kerala, the temples used to hold all these. They were culturally so active, the temples. And uh, we traveled across Kerala with Mohiniyattam performances. Um, what I remember 70s, uh, late 70s and uh, early 80s, we used to travel with uh, temple festivals um I, uh, same time my mutachan my grandfather would be busy with his performances he will be gone from his house for many days um, traveling from one place to the other place same way we amama used to take us the institution the dancers in the institution along with my mom and my cheriyama we traveled uh, across uh, gave numerous performances. Sometimes I ended up in performing three or four performances a week, back-to-back -back performances, and even double performances we have given. So this is like eight, late uh, 70s and uh, 80s. So, but the main problem, what was hap what happened is, um, unlike other uh, states, uh, North India or in, even in Chennai, these performances were more recorded, recorded in the sense, you know, there were uh, not uh, any critic or art historians were not there much in Kerala. So for, I can say very, very clearly, my performances, nothing was recorded. Um, forget about me, <laughs> I'm not telling my name, but even uh, great artists like Kalam Langish Nair, uh, Guru Mani Madhya Chakyar, all those performances, we, we just lost those performances. Nothing was recorded, those uh, great performances, stage, great stage shows. So for an outsider who don't know much about Kerala, they might look, for them, it looked, might look like they don't see anything from Kerala, but I think that is maybe um, they didn't have the knowledge about much about Kerala and or they didn't want to know much about Kerala. It is sad. Mohini Atam was existing in Kerala. Um, I, I am a witness of it. I have practiced that. And that was the, the, the leg legacy. You know, I was uh, traveling, uh, carrying and I was practicing. Uh, going around and performing and teaching. Um, yeah, and I was also, was also an empanand uh, dancer for uh, ICCR, Sangeet Nada Academy, Speak Mackey. I remember after uh, some time going with those performances, my I used to travel with Ammama for all her uh, master classes, uh, perform lecture demonstrations along with uh, for the Speak Mackey performances. So, it was filled. It was completely filled. It was, if somebody asked me, what's the life you want? You know, wow, this is exactly what I would like to have my childhood days where I learned uh, this dance from completely informal. Uh, my mother tongue, Mohini Atam is my mother tongue. And yeah, <laughs> what else I can say? Again, my, I'm sorry. No, no, please go ahead. 
please go ahead yeah again again um uh, traveling with uh, mama um with all her performance the same way i have traveled with my grandfather also mm -hmm. i have known him i have spent a lot of time with him he has fine tuned my facial expressions and uh, he a master class performer uh, who used to rule his stage with one act uh, performances many times i have felt like i'm living through that moment where you know the through the characters he's enacting on stage for so for me um, both of them both my grandfather and uh, both my grandmother leaving them with them was 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 something i i would <laughs> always uh, fortunate and say i'm fortunate yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> you right if i said that you didn't have a life or you didn't even imagine a life outside of dance that's all you ever wanted yes 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 never we i never thought of anything else as i said during my childhood days sometimes i'll be coming back from my school my charyamma would have prepared all my costume my cousins my sister was there uh, costumes everything will be ready we will be we'll just freshen up have something jump into the van and go for performances right. so it was like a day, daily basis routine we performed um, i i witnessed um, both my grandparents my aunt and my mom doing their classes all these things was a daily daily routine for me it was not something different uh, it was a life it was a life i was going through yes <laughs> so coming to the next question which is about you having started teaching at a very young age itself mm -hmm. now adindu you continuation aita we know that kalyan kutiyama teacher who da you have also gone to the renowned gurukul of pratima vedi nrityagram mm -hmm. in karnataka mm -hmm. they are still so well known for their system rigorous system of training and i'd like mm -hmm. to know what your experience was going there in the in another land outside of kerala and what was what were your learnings there of being a teacher and of experiencing the place yeah we sit to the tigram uh, was to establish the mohiniattam gurukulam there and uh, to my understanding pratima gauri bedi they she wanted to establish a gurukulam under the nutigram you know same hut um, a gurukulam for all the classical dance forms of india so uh, so i remember 1989 i believe it is 88 or 89 um, amma mutachan all these people went there and we inaugurated uh, the gurukulam uh, you know different I, it was like different huts she did the inaugural function there i was there with amma uh, which was a default factor i used to travel with her everywhere she go so but it by after my grandfather passed away uh, we uh, moved to we decided to start this gurukulam uh, in nathigram and uh, by the time amma considering her old age um, i decided to stay with her and uh, we could uh, build in uh, establish a structure establish for guru shish the guru guru gula system of learning is something which i had gone through so to revisiting those uh, days was something which was going on in uh, in nartigram so we taught that uh, like five students there five girls were there in the gurukulam learning mohini atam uh, for me more than these classes the time i could spend with amma amma when she was at home she used to be busy with her writing you know, busy with the household things so many things used to distract her and for me that was as i said it was an informal learning but when it came to the tigram after the classes the time i spend with amma um she used to uh, tell me the story the journey she went through little more you know, very informal but you know she we were together all the time we were together uh, revisiting some of the fundamentals of mohini atam the intricacies of choreography on item um that was for me at that time revisiting those things which i have learned in my childhood was amazing it was really an eye opening experience for me so 
it was a blessing. It was another uh, informal, very informal learning session for me. Uh, being with Amama, uh, no other thoughts. It's just Mohini Adam, just Mohini Adam. But later, um, after uh, two years or so, um, we came back from there, uh, from Nathigram. And later, Bharati uh, Shivaji, uh, she was uh, the teacher there. She taught there. We were there for, I think, one and a half or two years. We, we taught in the Tegra. Yes, it was definitely a, another learning session for me, I can say. And I was the main teacher there. Amama was just um, uh, observing the classes. Um, I was, I taught them. I taught in Mo, Mohini Adam there to the girls. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Teaching, teaching under the, uh, the, 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 you know, keen observation of our mama. <laughs> you have to do the right. You have to always do the right thing. Otherwise, it was very difficult. You should be very careful. For me, I, I learn from her. I make sure the chapters, whatever she wanted me to teach them. I made sure I, uh, again, go there, practice with her, and then teach these girls. So it was an experience. It was definitely another great experience I would like to cherish always. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> so as you moved ahead, I mean, your life went by and you became a soloist as well, right? You started performing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You started doing your own works of choreography. Mm -hmm. and time, has al time also changed slowly, like uh, the audience mm -hmm. changed and several matters. So how did that sort of change your craft as a choreographer, as a creator, when you started building up your own repertoire? What were the, uh, I mean, thoughts that came to your mind and how would you mark your contributions? I know you've done several productions. So would you speak a little bit about that? By the time I was born, it's a Mohini Atam was something that was very well established. Hmm. It was established. So for me, it was my role to contribute my my performances, my contributions. Even Amama's choreographies, most of the um, compositions she had written. For me, wherever I traveled, it was my duty to spread that style to to the world. Um, initially, it in India, Kerala, then India. Then I started traveling. Late 80s itself, I started traveling to other countries, started giving performances. So for me, it was, uh, and again, coming to US, here in US, last 20, 22 years, many places I go performing Mohini Atam, it was something, a new style for many people to observe me. To, you know, they, they are seeing Mohini Atam for the first time. Here in St. Louis, where I'm living, here also, um, many people, first time they are seeing me performing Mohini Adam. And after that, so many other dancers had come here to St. Louis also. So my duty was to, to introduce this dance form to wherever, most of the places I traveled, especially in US and other countries where I traveled. Again, talking about the contributions, I started uh, incorporating other uh, genres of music like Hindustani um, 20, 25 years back or 30 years back when I started performing for Hindustani music. I've never seen anybody doing uh, Hindustani music into uh, Mohini Atam, taking Mohini for Mohini Atam. So I have performed for um, the Hindustani music uh, of course, uh, Kathagali music I used and Sopanam music I have used. So all these uh, styles, different uh, classical genres I have uh, incorporated into Mohini Atta. Sorry, was and, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Was performance live? Did you do it for a live show with uh, live uh, music? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very interesting because uh, in the uh, in the olden days, it was uh, where, where I was in India, um, I could go around with live music. But as I traveled, as I started traveling to the outside world, outside uh, places, uh, there sometimes I had to take recorded music most of the time. So again, if I'm inspired by a particular song, 
Mm. I am not saying that I have not used some recorded, uh, already recorded music, pre-recorded music, uh, other than, you know, what I wanted to my dancing. But um, most of the time I uh, record it and uh, I had to record the music and I traveled with that. So um, um, Hindustani also, it was difficult when a Malayalam singer uh, sing the Hindustani song, the pronunciation might have changed a little bit here and there, but um, we could manage, I could manage uh, dancing for Hindustani music, Kathagali Sangeetam. Uh, at that time, seriously, I have not seen anybody doing um, for these, uh, dancing for these uh, songs. And coming to subject matter, I have uh, performed for most of the um, Malayalam poems. You know, my mom, uh, being a Malayalam uh, teacher, uh, for me, Malayalam was the very, it was, again, another <laughs> uh, informal way of talking, like it's our mother tongue, right? So Malayalam poems, I have danced a lot. Then um, taking subject matter from the recent history, I have performed a lot. Um, Nani, coming to Ammama's, I'm sorry? Nani Lakshmi Bhai's uh, Saptam. Exactly. That is in the Saptam format I performed, in Saptam format. Uh, initially, I used to travel uh, with, uh, you know, performed with uh, saptams, which I mama had choreographed, um, com written and uh, composed. Later, I uh, brought in um, Rani Lakshmi Bhai's uh, compositions. And for example, last year, um, when it came for a stage show, a theatrical show, I had to, uh, I brought in the concept of uh, women empowerment, Sri Shakti, where I incorporated uh, ladies from uh, Purana, Itihasa, and uh, history, recent history, um, you know, taking three characters, uh, Kunti, uh, Durga, and uh, <laughs> I should say Durga, Kunti, and Rani Lakshmi Bai. So mm, that is my other, and uh, yes, that, whatever my gurus had already established, for me, it's my tiny, tiny contributions to the Mohini Atom. And um, I won't say that was the landmark choreography or composition, but it is my tiny con contribution to this particular uh, dance dance style. Yes. You had the fortune of choreographing and showing it to your grandmother. Would you Did you start choreographing that early while she was alive? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Her, her way of teaching was, as I said, it was... Uh, I didn't even know that I was <laughs> choreographing. Sometimes she made me do that. It was a very informal way of teaching. Sometimes she will be resting during her afternoon hours. She uh, she come and teach me. So for me, she give me some uh, songs and she just like that, she asked me, okay, Molo, you go and teach her, teach the girl. So she was actually training me. I didn't know that she was training me, but I learned choreographing also while I was learning. And there are mama. So definitely, yes, I have choreographed while our mama was there. I have uh, shown her my choreographies. Yes, again, um, you know, after that also, after coming out of my, um, after the 20s, after my 20s, um, early 20s also, she has observed me uh, doing choreographies of my own. And many times I've heard our mama telling, Molo, you have to do Mohini Atam. It's your Mohini Atam, my love. I love to see you perform in Mohiniyatam. That's a blessing. Again, my grandfather's acknowledgement, me as a dancer, uh, I have, I remember uh, Mutashen watching my TV performances, Doordarshan performances, acknowledging me. And I overheard, uh, heard him saying to my mom, how, uh, you know, she's talented. She's talented, right, Mani? <laughs> she used to tell that. So those things, it's a blessing, yes. Yes. <laughs> About your grandfather, I wanted to ask you, how is the Abhinaya Kalari with uh, Krishna Nairashan? Mutashan used to uh, take uh, um, Kathagali um, stories like, um, I have learned from him, um, Lelita, Kirmida Vatham Lelita, Pudana Moksham, um, like that story, many, many such um, uh, portions I have learned from him. And for, it was 
more more he used to sit and make the expressions teach the expressions so it was an intense i used to be very very scared to sit in front of him he he used to be uh, in the upstairs of our house uh, we go there learn from him um, very tough teacher a very tough tough teacher he was uh, i used to uh, <laughs> but what to say it uh, again in during choreography some compositions if i have a doubt um, you know, i have every, i had everybody at home uh, to so yes again i cannot say that how i learned it was again a process it was a kind of a daily uh, routine or a daily process of learning abhinaya it was very intense classes uh, both of them both my grandfather and my grandmother learning abhinaya from him Uh, the intricacies of mudras so to take uh, if you ask him uh, in, not like in kathakali kathakali the abhinaya is very elaborate right but in mohini atam to bring the same thing but use of that uh, the eye use of the uh, ex, uh, eyebrows and everything the to bring in the lightness of mohini atam um yes yeah he he yeah. <laughs> yeah i know it was a process that you yourself didn't know was happening right so very organic exactly very yes 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 it was a uh, my my language i was learning that which i didn't even know which i didn't realize that exactly uh, i was learning yes <laughs> and it was my responsibility to um carry it from there after when i realized that uh, this is something uh, my duty my responsibility so it was it was a very very uh, natural process for me performing uh, learning was a natural process later performing was a natural process and teaching was a natural process i'm so grateful that i could touch many hearts Uh, by my performances and my teaching uh, over the years i when i travel to us also here here completely away from my home my culture um, carrying and spreading this dance form to the next generation i'm grateful that i can do that whatever they gave me i'm trying to uh, spread it uh, among my uh, to the next generation dancers also right we'll come yeah, to that yeah. point a little later about your students sure. you know but mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. now as we were on the topic of choreography today i mm -hmm. have mentioned that you know we have these large stages extremely large mm -hmm. stages, sometimes a little difficult to perform mohini atam and you know reach the audience in the right way so mm. in these situations do you try and you know make tweaks in your choreography or do you while choreographing put this aspect in mind and have you also tried to explore light sound or other you know extra uh, the other contributors to a performance have you tried to explore the, yeah the 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 large stages with numerous different lights and sound it creates an optics for the audience definitely in the olden days when i, I performed in the temples what one thing i remember my grandmother asking is a littered stage because mohini atam gave such a lot of importance for abhinaya so and again we are dancing with a one single costume we don't have um, i i have practiced i have learned and i have practiced with single uh, white or off white uh, sari with golden jewelry golden ornaments so performing an art form like that with uh, with uh, more we require littered light that's what i have experienced yes but when it comes to a larger stage a big crowd um, there require nowadays people are using all these lights and uh, this big sound you have to understand these audience who are coming and sitting there i don't think they are coming there to watch a very typical or a soulful mohini atam performance they are coming to have a different experience from the stage so we as mohini atam dancers have a responsibility to choose uh, what item how we present 
I have taken my students along with me for such performances, uh, giving a theatrical effect to such audience, such stage, such uh, rasikas. They are looking for a theatrical kind of presentation. I have taken saptams, mm. and again, the dancer has to be that confident to take such stage with a one one man show. So uh, yes, I have performed saptams. It's a story, right? It's a storytelling. Uh, through the saptam, um, we can, it, if she has the capability of holding that audience, uh, carrying them through this particular storytelling, yes, you can take that stage. But otherwise, you should be very careful. Uh, yes, I have seen a lot of people, a lot of other dancers using colors and lights, even they, they are confused how to present, how to take up this big stage. We should be very careful when choosing such uh, stages. Even if we have to take that, that stage, we should be, um, I would say if you, if the dancer is not confident enough to uh, to hold an audience with a one-man show, she should go with a, a group performance. Group performance can uh, bring in a theatrical effect and uh, you can present. So yes, I have faced such uh, many such um, audience, many such big stages in the uh, temples, I should say. In those days, Kerala temples, I have danced for a crowd, a thousands will be sitting there. Those days, the stage will be, the temple stage will be small. But the audience will be, you can see them that far. The audience is that far. You have to bring in that expression. If you do an expression and if you do this one, this has to reach that audience who is sitting on the last last row. So um, yes, Mohiniyatam, to my experience, Mohiniyatam needs a littered stage more than colors colors and uh, we are doing uh, one man acting um, now, could you we can a little further i'm uh, actually a little confused do you mean amber lighting only like yellow nowadays nowadays we are using amber lights lights yes what i'm saying about the temple temple uh, stages where everything was so normal very regular wow. lighting very littered lighting uh, compared to this today's stage. Today's, I prefer more amber lighting and a bright littered stage for Mohiniyatam for my performances. I don't prefer uh, colors. Uh, right. Again, my costume is uh, white and off white with golden jewelry. So amber lights are perfect. Uh, other than that, for me, um, I don't prefer. I don't prefer uh, dancing for big colors. Last year, for example, I performed in uh, Khana, Kerala Hindu Association in uh, New, New York, yeah, New Jersey. And there, 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 the stage was already set up with a lot of lightings. Wow. So I, I, the one thing I told them was I want a very littered stage, a bright stage. And I, please, please limit using a lot of other colors into the stage performance. Every dance form has its own identity. Mohini Adam has its own identity. So a practitioner should be bold enough to say what I want. That's what I what I remember, what I think you should do. And if you try to copy uh, an ODC performance or a Bharatanatyam performance, you cannot hold, you know, you won't be able to bring your identity onto the stage. You should try to, you should know your language. Know your language and deliver. That's what you should do. Whatever, wherever you perform, it can be a very informal one small room performance. It can be a temple stage. It can be a sabha uh, where you can hold hundreds of people, or it can be a big wide stadium uh, where you perform. Wherever you perform, the main thing is the dancer should know her language and then know her resika, know her audience, and perform and give performance knowing your audience. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> but I mean, many a times as dancers, like you said, we have we are exposed to these big stages, different kinds of stages that, like you said, you need to know how to uh, present mm -hmm. your performance at such points. But yes, for you yes. as a dancer, as a Mohiniyatam dancer, what do you think is the best suited stage for Mohiniyatam? What kind of a stage is best suited? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I have danced for um, many kind of stages. I don't know. It's a, the audience is the main thing uh, okay. for a performer. The audience, uh, knowing the audience is the main thing. So uh, any stage you have to take as a performer, you have to take any stage, right? You cannot say that, oh, I won't dance for that particular stage. You have to take, but you knowing the audience, knowing your Rasika and understanding and delivering what you want to convey, um, knowing the Rasika is the main thing. It's not a particular stage that you have to choose. Okay, okay. No, ma'am, actually yeah. what I meant was by the size, not, uh not by the festival or the the present the place that where you're going to perform what i meant uh, yeah the stage so when you are asking when is when we are me i am performing alone right yeah see you have to be very careful with that one because in mohiniyattam we don't have very quick and very running we don't run around or definitely we may do that when we portray a particular character we can bring in the rigorous movements uh, for a required for a particular character but in a very limited way so what i have used is uh, when i am uh, that up to uh, you know about to dance in a very big stage the stage can be very deep sometimes so what i ask them to bring in a curtain so that i can limit that space a, li space a little bit or something I try to limit it and a dancer for a dancer she needs to understand the ankles when she's performing. This is something which I have always incorporated in my dance. And I have also taught to my students, when you are presenting, keeping and knowing your ankles. Uh, ankles, for example, we are always, a dancer is always in the center, dancing in center of a cube. She has to imagine a cube, uh, a square under her feet, a square on her sides, in the front and the top everywhere there is a square so if you can keep these dimension these anchors in your mind whichever stage you are dancing you can bring in a, uh, a you know we can deliver your dance much more effectively but if it is a round stage very round stage then again the main thing a dancer should know is to understand her audience um, to whether you are able to communicate to that audience that is the main uh, point a dancer should uh, always keep in mind. Always keep in mind. Yeah. Now, ma'am, the next question to you is something that I've asked several dancers on this platform. Just to know their view. I mean, uh, the term last year is so commonly used for us and definitely a very important element in Mohiniyat. But is there something more to it that a person brings, a dancer herself has a certain kind of lasya or your understanding of lasya might differ from somebody else's. Uh, mm -hmm. On a very personal level and on how you approach your art form, what does lasya mean to you and how does it sort of manifest in the body of a dancer? Lasya, uh, a word from our Sanskriti, it is, we are trying to put it in uh, language, English language. And uh, this particular language, which is not as matured as our civilizational knowledge. So it's like asking, what is the meaning of dharma? Dharma, it's, um, in, it's, it's something that is incorporated with a culmination of a lot of virtues. So to define dharma, it's very difficult in English. Same way, lasya is again another word, which is very difficult to give an exact trans translation in English yes it's a it's it's it, it you can reflect in a very graceful manner and in this particular uh, dance style uh, Mohini Atam when you want to bring in an idea or you want to communicate a thought process using the elements of this dance style you know it's very soft it is a very uh, very feminine uh, in that sense moment but it doesn't mean that it is a sensual moment it is an instrument you, a person used to uh, portray or perform. And, and many times and always, it is the person's Sanskriti uh, in, with which she can uh, take a character, portrayal can, it depends a lot on her understanding, her Sanskriti. Even not only the performer, for a viewer also, uh, it is his Sanskriti his, uh, which uh, plays a big role in 
character uh, when you talk about lasia uh, you can take characters when you can take um, um, ashtapadis when you take ashtapadis it is that person a person sanskriti that defines her way of interpretation of a character right yeah okay. <laughs> perfect uh, ma'am like i said earlier you were talking about your students you have based yourself in the us for the past 20 mm -hmm. 20 years like you said and uh, mm -hmm. you having been trained in such a rigorous systematized process in a gurukula mm -hmm. system having mm -hmm. settled in the us and started teaching students there have you faced mm -hmm. challenges and how do you look at the approach of students there because they come from a different cultural background right so mm -hmm. how what is your approach to teaching them and how seriously do they take mohini atta <laughs> yeah uh, i when i came here to us for the first time um, for almost one uh, few months mm. i was here left alone with no dance no music for me it was a kind of a cultural shock for me because i used to be uh, surrounded with music and dance when my performances my teaching my classes my students uh, wherever i went so when i came here the first time when i came here um Uh, yeah i was carry i uh, you know it was my second after my second boy was uh, uh, delivered uh, i started uh, the classes here yeah, people slowly came to know that uh, me as a dancer i'm here and uh, uh, it was a blessing wherever uh, this is the the wealth you have so students seek you you know and they come come to me and uh, that was a blessing when i started my classes here uh it was interesting to see how the slowly the students started blooming uh, one by one coming and i started with mohini atam with the uh, two uh, girls who were here to do their ms um, in um, yeah they came here to and they are all settled here now uh, they are my uh, two of my senior students here and then later um, uh, to the younger generation you know that i have uh learned other disciplines also like kathakali i have learned um, mohini atam i have learned same way in our kerala kalalayam in my gurukulam days i have learned uh, bharatanatyam kuchipudi and uh, carnatic music i have learned carnatic music for almost uh, 20 years more than 20 years i have learned carnatic music so all these knowledge keeping all these knowledge in mind uh, i do give classes here in bharatanatyam and kuchipudi but when a very um, junior level only i teach uh, the the classes here for those types seriously into mohini atam so um, initially when i started uh, teaching mohini atam here it was very difficult for me to tell the students what is mohini atam so it's not just the keralites who learn that dance form here i have students from other parts of the uh, from india you know learning the mohini atam here under me the my first uh, duty was to show them what is mohini atam so to present mohini atam and uh, over the years i have little ones also very little ones uh, who mohini atam is an art form which require a lot of it unlike bharatanatyam or kuchipudi which has a lot of colors and a lot of brisk movements so for a youngster to start mohini atam she should be that she should love that art form with so much of passion and mm -hmm. come and ask me so until she has that passion i don't start teaching mohini atam i teach them bharatanatyam or kuchipudi those forms and uh, um, later um, for mohini atam when you talk about mohini atam the idavus for mohini atam which a mama has defined or established is very very strict it has a lot of um, mandalas the the sitting positions which will take a lot of strain on a dancer's knee so to train the flexibility to train these uh, movements in mohini atam 
um, both the student <laughs> teacher of course need to have a lot of patience to learn the dance form it's very easy for a student or a, a child to write a straight line but to draw a circle it takes years of experience so i always tell my students me as a for me also i have seen that difference when i was learning even now i try to correct myself because i have a critical uh, with my teaching experience i know what is wrong what is correct so when when i came to us away from my teachers uh, i what i try to do is i do video recording and i make sure that uh, if any always always i have tried my best to um, correct my my movement same way when students are learning i do have some of the girls who are learning under me mohini atam i might have gone through the adavus one time but it is a re every class i make sure these girls practice the adavus mm -hmm. because practice the adavus are the fundamentals for uh, the movement for mohini atam you every abhinaya on top of these adavus when a dancer learns it can show the basic the fundamental rule of how you hold your legs how you hold the mandalas how you hold your particular hands everything is based on these basic footworks or the basic adavus in mohini atam so it's not an easy dance form to learn the student has to have that much passion and determination to learn a da classical dance form like mohini atam and you know it is very or very uh, slow uh, flowing and more of a uh, giving more importance to the the the, the spiritual uh, way of presenting presenting so it it requires a lot of patience determination and passion uh, from a dancer to learn um, this particular dance form correct thank you ma'am yeah. and uh, towards uh, the end one thing that i would like to ask you is like you said you have um, trained in kathakali as well and your mm -hmm. father is a doyan in the field and mm -hmm. like you said he would own a stage and having been mm -hmm. trained in this and also exposed to other classical art forms of kerala like we have kathakali and kodi atam apart from mohini atam mm -hmm. and a lot of other folk forms but talking about the classical forms of kathakali and kodi atam which are highly stylized and mm -hmm. they have a set audience and namal parayile kathakali prandulla aalkar und adu pole oru audience do you think mohini atam has and what keeps um, Mohini Atam stand. Out. What does what makes Mohini Atam stand out from these two art forms that are highly stylized? And Mohini Atam is more of a pure dance form, right? Here you don't see as much dancing. It's more of drama and abhinaya that happens in the other two art forms. So, what do you think that keeps Mohini Atam different? A proper understanding of this particular dance form. learning it for years from a teacher knowing the substance of this dance form and such a dancer who deliver this particular dance style i don't think she needs to have that doubt whether she can stand up with kathakali or bharatanatyam or even kudiyattam such dance forms i have never felt that kind of a, a question i have never uh, had such a uh, doubt or an in uh, what to say <laughs> that i have never felt that i ha i i don't i cannot stand along with kathakali or kudiyattam or bharatanatyam it is such a strong dance form it is a language and you are there to present an or a present an idea or to uh, to bring in a thought you have so why should a dancer be um, insecure in that sense i don't think so you just should here, just I'm sorry if, just interrupting here i want to rephrase my question because i think you got it wrong what i meant sorry what makes mohini atam stand out from kathakali and kodi atam not uh, make it different in a weaker sense i didn't mean that okay though. okay because i yes good that you told me why i said that is i have faced i have 
listen to so many young dancers coming up and asking me that uh, we have felt so bad uh, dancing mohini atam and we couldn't catch up with the dancers so mohini atam is again a classical dance form with a strong base and strong um identity of its own and um, i have performed mohini atam along with kathakali i have performed mohini atam along with uh, given jugalbandi performances um i remember i danced with um, senior uh, my stage also with other dancers teachers i have incorporated uh, mohini atam presentations and mohini atam it's it's strong identity it it it's a particular character is it's a, it's it's um what to say it can hold on it can hold on and that's its identity to uh, it's it's bhasha that language itself is it's um i think i answered your question yeah <laughs> I got an answer. I think what con- made the confusion confusion was about uh, Kathakali Prandar no Varnula. But our audience in the, uh, the Kathakali. Con- I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Kathakali. Kathakali. I mentioned about Mohiniyattam not having a dedicated audience. That could be the oh. reason why you got confused. But uh, that was a separate question. Well, okay, Mohiniyattam kuna nalloru audience silya na mabal. Yeah. Ende ende manusila kalle Mohiniyattam. അത് കൈകാര്യം ചെയ്യുന്ന കലാകാരി കല കൈകാര്യം ചെയ്യുന്ന കലാകാരിക്ക് അതിന്റെ ഒരു കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ധാരണ അബൌട്ട് ദ സ്ട്രോങ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് സെയിം ആസ് യുവർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ഇറ്റ് യുവർ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ ഓൾസോ ക്യാൻ ഹോൾഡ് ഓൺ വിത്ത് എനി അതർ ഡാൻസ് ഫോം സെയിം ആസ് ഓർ മെനി ടൈംസ് ഐ ഹാവ് ഫെൽറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് സ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് അബൌ <laughs> it was standing above the other dance style uh, yes i did have and uh, being um, learning mohiniyattam and presently knowing other styles of dance forms also kathakali i know uh, i know bharatanatyam i know kathakali um, and presenting mohiniyattam along with these dance styles i had experiences where i felt oh my god can i hold on with uh, this that particular style but i had always felt um it 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 stands part to part with the other style and also many times i have felt oh no it can it is something which we can hold on you know it can be above also above the level of other dance styles also perfect yeah. let's move ahead with this thought strongly for the years to come as well thank you so each much each of us has each of us has our own con- our little small contributions to the dance form and um, me me as a performer i am under carrying or um, continuing on the great contributions of our uh, civilizational knowledge and uh, trying to uh, contribute our small small uh, additions to this particular flow flow of and that is mohini atam mohini atam will grow and uh, all everybody will uh, be able to contribute uh, their own their own possible ways <laughs> and as part of your journey i'd also like to mention that you have also made the film a documentation of your grandmother's journey for mohini atam yes 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 that was something which i want to say i have um uh, other than a, a dancer and a teacher i have worked as a uh, organizer i have done uh, kalyana krishna foundation under the banner it's one way i um, salute my masters kalyana krishna foundation under that uh, banner i had been doing uh, 15 almost 15 years it's a daily it's a yearly function a three day festival in kochi and under that banner i did um, do the mo- movie mother of mohini atam uh, dr vinod mangara had directed that movie and um, yeah that is one thing and again under kalyana krishna i had uh, published and being also become an editor for a book published a book for uh, it's an encyclopedic work for uh, my mother guru shri devi rajan's mudrakyam hand gestures and it required a phenomenal amount of uh, pictureization it required for that so i had been an organizer a publisher an editor and uh, what to say and um, um, also you know i'm hoping that i can uh, create a next platform i'm looking forward for creating a, a platform 
under the banner of Kalyana Krishna uh, Foundation itself, um, hoping for to do that uh, next part of my life. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Absolutely wonderful. I wish you all the best in all of the end endeavors that you take in future as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing everything that you shared today with us. It's really a learning experience for us also to know about your relationship with Mohini Atom, which came so organically to you, like you said. So thank you, ma'am. Valara Sandoshanda. Thank you so much for having me and uh, your works, Malavika, and hope all, um, all best wishes for all your works. Thank you. Move forward with Mohini Atom. Thank you very much. Wish you the same. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.